Radiohead would not be who they are without Kid A. The success of OK Computer had the band set out on an ambitious tour, with their largest performance set on the Glastonbury stage. It was riddled with technical problems, a complete nightmare for Tom York, who was already burnt out on playing the album's material. But it was a tour that wouldn't end for another year and a half. The mindless cycle of creating albums, then touring them, was destroying Radiohead. When they had finally gotten to a place where they could take a break and not be forgotten, Tom was left catatonic. Experiencing intense depression, the success and subsequent tour of OK Computer put his mental state in a place he never wanted to be. OK Computer had become an instant classic, but now expectations for a worthy follow-up were high as critics and audiences looked at Radiohead to carry the genre forward. In their pursuit, Radiohead suffered bouts of writer's block, leading to self-doubt and the near breakup of the band. Had they released another album in the same vein as OK Computer or The Benz, they might have become the biggest band in the world. Instead, they released Kid A, in quite possibly the greatest left turn in music history. The band had lost complete confidence in their work, scrapping any new material they had conjured up. To top it off, Tom had no interest in playing guitar, much less rock music. The group gathered in Paris to begin on a new record, then again in Copenhagen. But nothing came of those sessions. Each member had different ideas of how Radiohead should musically move forward, eventually questioning if they could move forward together at all. Guitarist Ed O'Brien wanted to strip the effects from OK Computer and write another guitar-driven album. Tom only wanted rhythm. It was an awkward position for a band who prided itself on its collaborative songwriting. And with no set deadline or any completed songs, Radiohead's demise was looking increasingly likely. Working on his own for the most part, he took to the piano and the synthesizer. He was inspired by the risk-taking of Warp Records, an independent label featuring ambient artists like Aphex Twin. He saw their work as music being pushed forward, and liked the idea that electronics didn't emote that he could program a loop and have it carry on without his guidance, where he didn't have to pour himself into the music. He wanted a different path for Radiohead, where they could renounce the label put on them as the greatest rock band in the world, to remove themselves from the confines of genre. But what he didn't tell his bandmates was that he didn't want to sing either. As the idea man, Tom convinced his band to veer outside of their comfort zone, and into a world of whirling electronics, leaving some band members clueless as to how they would contribute. After all, there were three guitarists on Radiohead's roster. Their next album would be like getting a massive eraser out and starting again. The group moved into an empty mansion without a plan, spending most of their time reading manuals for the electronic instruments they recently acquired. Their instrumental roles were redefined, as Radiohead began radically experimenting with their songwriting process. Where the majority of OK Computer was recorded live, Kid A saw the group recording in teams, leaving other band members with no idea of what the others were coming up with. They'd reconvene later, piecing together their individual fragments into a collage of sound. But this disjointed approach left a lot of open space in recordings. Recorded on a Prophet 5 synth, Everything in Its Right Place was the first track to be completed. From there, the band regained their confidence and had a better grasp of their new direction. Less than a handful of songs audibly have any guitar on them. To compensate, guitarist Johnny Greenwood learned to play the Andes Martineau, one of the earliest electronic instruments. You can hear it manipulating Tom's voice on the title track. Although he also found new ways to use his guitar. The ambient alien synths on Tree Fingers are actually made up entirely of sampled guitars. The way the music feels on Kid A matters much more than the lyrics. Tom wrote down his lyrical ideas on strips of paper, pulling them out of a hat at random to form phrases. In this way, the lyrics don't tell a story. Hell, the music doesn't even tell a story. What does is the atmosphere created within. While initially afraid to commit emotionally to the album, Radiohead wound up with a surprising amount of emotional depth. Tom's emotions come across more clearly than any particular message. It feels barren distant and void of any happy human emotions. Thomas said that Kid A is the name of what the first human clone will be. Well, the music is the environment Kid A grows up in. Once the guys got their new process rolling, there was no stopping them. 
The new tech they were learning was expanding their sonic possibilities. Now, they were only arguing over the track listing and whether or not this new album should be a double or not. They were so inspired by their new way of working, they wound up recording enough material for two albums, releasing Amnesiac less than a year later. If OK Computer took rock music to its peak, then Kid A destroyed it. Radiohead could have put out anything at the time, and it would have hit number one. But while many anticipated more guitar rock, Kid A went in the entirely opposite direction. They had created yet another cohesive album, but completely subverted everyone's expectations. As boy bands and rap metal rose to the top, here was an electronic album from a rock band hitting number one, without any lead singles or videos. The response was so divided, audiences and critics couldn't decide if it was a masterpiece or a complete misstep. Most of Radiohead's audience had never heard the electronic music that the band had borrowed from, leading them to believe Radiohead had invented the whole thing themselves. Kid A was a rock album that repackaged intelligent dance music, kraut rock, and ambient. And those aware of the underground electronic scene saw their use of electronics as clumsy and dated, making Kid A seem more inaccessible than groundbreaking. This new shift came about from what the band were listening to at that time. Where previous outings captured echoes of U2 and Pink Floyd, Kid A took notes from electronic jam bands like Can. The ambient techno influences of Aphex Twin. the chaotic jazz of Charles Mingus. And many others, although it's difficult to draw comparisons when they're fundamentally different in intent. But it was Talking Heads' album Remain in Light that was the band's ultimate reference point. It too was similarly constructed as a collection of fragments, leading to a unique emotional range. The fact that Radiohead were able to successfully draw from such varied sounds at the height of their popularity coming off of OK Computer was pretty impressive, but none of it would have mattered if the songs weren't any good. Kid A could also be seen as a natural progression from OK Computer's electronically textured sound, just a massive step forward. We wouldn't have Idiotech if Radiohead didn't mess with drum machines back on airbag. The synths of Subterranean Homesick Alien are audible in everything in its right place. And Fitter Happier prepared us for Kid A's eerie instrumental breaks. The sound was so radically different, but it was still distinctly Radiohead. It just took a little more time to enjoy, as they prioritized texture over hooks. Radiohead went from creating one atmospherically acclaimed album that had an undeniable influence on modern music, to then suffering from writer's block and self-doubt, to then releasing an album that defied categorization. An album that has since been referenced as a massive influence on other artists. Again. Back to back, they're stunning. Radiohead were willing to present their fan base with something completely game changing, whether they asked for it or not. They didn't intend to alienate their audience, their musical interests only evolved, and they shifted towards making music that excited them. Kid A was met with raging division upon its release, but has gone on to be recognized as the band's most ambitious effort, and one of the most important albums of its era. In retrospect, their U-turn away from arena rock is an encouraging story for any band that refuses to conform to expectations. It may not sound like the work of a rock band, but it definitely sounds like Radiohead. The process of creating this album saw the band destroy themselves completely in order to build the band they would become. Radiohead would not be who they are without Kid A. Radiohead decided to start from scratch and venture into unknown territory with Kid A. If you're looking to expand your musical know-how, then I'd recommend checking out K-Theory's music production class. They break down their techniques when it comes to sampling, drum programming, and constructing hooks and melodies. You can find the class on Skillshare. Whether it's music production, graphic design, or animation, Skillshare has more than 25,000 classes to help you take that next step. 
a subscription is less than 10 bucks a month, but as Skillshare is sponsoring this video, my viewers can use the link in the description to get two months free, which should give you enough time to learn something new and sharpen your skills. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like rating. Subscribe to hear more stories about the music you love. If you can support the channel on Patreon for as low as a dollar, you can get some rewards, look at behind the scenes of what's happening with each video. I recently rolled out a whole brand new reward system. So if you'd like to, you know, earn some rewards and actually see what's happening in the process of making these videos, head over there. But other than that, tell me, what do you like better, Kid A or OK Computer? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and that's it for me. Again, thanks for watching, and keep listening.